Hi there. We're going for a ride today. And when I say we, I'm talking about just you and me. Eh, maybe a thousand of our friends. I, uh, I'm stopping right here by the fountain for a reason. I mentioned before that I have a sound audio problem with my iPhone and I have a microphone. You can uh, maybe see it down here on my shirt. And I have it down there on my shirt because I had it up here on my collar and you could hear my heavy breathing. And this isn't the channel for heavy breathing. Anyway, I'm gonna go for a ride. It's out to the very west end of Lake Chapala. And there's an RV park out there called Roca Azul. I don't understand Roca Azul. It means blue rock and I've been out there before and I didn't see any blue rocks. But I'm doing this for a subscriber and uh, 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 an RVing friend who wanted me to go and check it out. And I haven't been out there for about five years. So we're gonna go take a look at it. And I thought that the rest of you, even though you might not be interested in an RV park, might be interested in a 15 kilometer ride along the north shore of Lake Chapala through all the little towns. So that's what we're gonna do today. Well, here we are in the van. You know, I figured out how to get the local cop to stop uh, hassling me about not wearing my seatbelt. I started wearing it. I'm not going to give you the tour guides play-by-play uh, -play through these little uh, towns on the north shore of Lake Chapala. The name of the channel is JC Travel Stories. You're going to travel, enjoy the scenery, and I'm going to tell some stories. Because that's how I roll. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. The first sizable town you come to going from Ahihik to Hokotepec is San Juan Kosala. And I heard a story a few years ago, actually about both of those towns. You may or may not like it, it might not be politically correct, depending on how you think about things. I was told this by a very well-respected Mexican, so if it offends you, don't blame me. Blame him for telling this gringo a secret. Mexicans have a great sense of humor, and you're going to need one too to find humor in this. There's a thing in Mexican culture that the more Spanish blood you have, as opposed to Indio blood, um, Aztec, Mayan, etc., Purapecha, I think is how you pronounce that. Anyway, the more Spanish blood you have, the greater respect you get. And I'm certainly not endorsing that, and don't blame me for repeating it. It, it, it exists. But you have to understand that to get the story. In a friendly rivalry between the two cities, San Juan, Kosala, and uh, Hokotepec, they kind of trash talk each other. So the story is that what the people from Hokotepec say is that when we drive through San Juan Kosala, we have to duck our heads because of all the arrows flying over the street. Now, that's the story. And if it offends you, please realize that I was told that by a very, very well-respected Mexican who lives in San Juan Kosala. Okay, I digress, as I do for a moment. I just listened to this in editing and I realized that I am saying San Juan Cosala instead of San Juan Cosala, which would be more correct in Spanish, I believe. Now, I really appreciate my Mexican friends who correct me and help me with my Spanish, but some of those who don't know me aren't quite so kind. So this message is for the guy, in uh, the Mexican, who keeps correcting me and calling me a stupid gringo because I say casita instead of casita. Uh, I put you in the same category as my wife when she tells me to say syrup instead of syrup. Only I love you less and I'm being extremely nice with my language. Many, many years ago, there was an English teacher and a speech teacher, and they had an ongoing debate about whether it was more important, according to the English teacher, to speak correctly, or it was more important, according to the speech teacher, to communicate effectively. I was that speech teacher, and if you don't think that I communicate effectively, move on. 
This is the back road to Roca Azul from uh, in town in Hokotepec. And it's not the way that I would go if I were driving an RV. Um, this is about uh, three kilometers of um, kind of rough road. Those are uh, raspberry field um, covers that you see there. And now I think we are just coming up to the turn into Roca Azul. Roca Azul is a little community with a lot of very nice little houses in it, uh, built a long time ago as a gated community. A lot of these gated communities are built that way and then the homeowners all decide they don't want to pay for the guard at the gate, so there's a gate but there's no guard. And that's one of these places. Um, there's a better way to get in here than that bumpy road we came in on. It's probably after you enter here, about a mile to this point, which is the gate that goes into the RV park. Over here to my right, um, there's some huge big swimming pools and those are all available as far as I know to the people who are in the RV park. Sorry I didn't clean my windshield for you. I um, didn't realize the sun was going to shine on it that bad. So here we're going into the RV park. That white thing there is an RV covered up with uh, Tyvek, it's called. That's what they insulate wooden houses with, or moisture, moisture barrier vapor stuff. Um, there's some shady spots in here. And I think uh, if it didn't bother you to be a little ways from town, like, you know, you're going to have to have a, another car if you're a fifth wheel and got a pickup to go to town with, or you're a Class A with a toad, um, you'd be just fine in here. If you have to uh, pack up and go to town in your smaller RV or Class B, Probably might be kind of a hassle to be out here. It's uh, probably four kilometers, I'm guessing, from Hokotepec. And um, I don't know, maybe as nice and quiet as you think, it would be a perfect place for you. I talked to a person that lives in here. I wasn't able to find a manager. And he told me that. Uh, he pays 4,500 pesos per month, which uh, 200, $250 depending on the exchange rate. Uh, full hookups, and um, I'm really sorry, RVers. I didn't check to see what kind of uh, amperage they have. Um, I just really don't know. I'm sorry I didn't check on that. This is at the very west end of uh, Lake Chapala. So looking out across the lake right there that direction it would be 60 kilometers to the other end. We're leaving the RV park now and this is what was on my right coming in, it's on my left going out. And the guy that uh, lives there told me that they also have thermal hot spring pools, or at least one, that you can go and therapeutically soak in. This is the exit, so we're probably a mile and a half of very smooth cobblestone streets from the park now. And this is on the way back into Hokotepec. This is Main Street, one of the main streets in Hokotepec. I like Hokotepec. Hokotepec is, um, 
It's a much more Mexican community than certainly Ahihik. And um, it, Jocotepec is, a, is like a, in the, if you're in the United States, you have counties. And that's not exactly what they call them here, but counties uh, have seats or uh, main towns. And Jocotepec is the main town for one county, and Chapala is the main town for the um, county that Ahihik is actually in. So we go to Chapala to pay our property taxes and traffic tickets and all of the government business that we would do, we do in the city of Chapala. This is the main plaza in Hokotapec, and across the street uh, to our right here is the church in Hokotapec. And there's a story about the church that you might enjoy. That church is very unusual in its covering. It's that red volcanic stone all over the outside of it. There's an interesting story about it. A nickname for that church is La Quinta, and La Quinta in Spanish means the fifth. And it has that nickname because it was historically the fifth stagecoach stop between Morelia and Guadalajara. There was a young boy who grew up in Jocotepec who went on to start or have a great deal to do with a hotel chain named La Quinta. It's all over the world. And that's why it's named that, because he grew up in the town that was the fifth stagecoach stop between Morelia, city of great historical significance in Mexico, and Guadalajara, La Quinta. I don't know if that story is true. I went on Wikipedia to see if I could verify it, and it didn't say anything about that. But maybe the Mexican guy that told me that story knows more about Hocotopec than the guy that wrote the Wikipedia report. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.